Hey kids, it's the Drive to School Podcast. I am Pastor Goodman, your host, and today we are going to talk about some things that you're going to see in church. One of the things that you might see in church this Sunday is we are just like a, a few days away from Ash Wednesday, so we're getting just a little bit lenty, is it's a chance to sort of reflect on why Jesus does the things that he does. And, and in our, our text for today, uh, there is a blind guy who is so desperate for help that he will fight his way through a crowd just to cry out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus says, what do you want me to do for you? Like, to, to, the, to the very obviously blind guy, what's the problem here? And it feeds this sort of like twisted little thought that so many of us share that like God isn't actually just going to help out of compassion, that we have to somehow ask him right. Like he's sort of the, the genie that wants to twist our wish around. So we need to make sure that we spell it out just how to do his job and make sure we do it often enough and with the right heart or attitude to actually convince him that he needs to help us. Because like, how do you not see the blind man trying to, to, to cry out for mercy and try and figure out what the problem is and say, well, I don't know who, who could say what he needs. Really, if we think we have to ask for God's help before he'll answer, there's probably something else that goes with it, something we're afraid to ask, that if, if God made all of these promises to answer prayer, why not just sort of like, I don't know, take care of us so that we don't hurt in, in the first place? Like, if you have to ask God before he'll do it, does that make him lazy or uncaring or dumb or, or, or what? And the craziest thing is we actually kind of prefer it that way. We wish for a God who wouldn't actually help us unless we first ask him just right because, well, that gives him an excuse. You see, you know that the blind man was healed by the end of the story, but there's at least one listener out there who prayed and God didn't help. There's at least one of us harboring that deep resentment because, well, we have asked and we have asked a lot and we have asked wholeheartedly. And it's almost better if God has an excuse for saying no because very clearly he promised. See, if you are struggling for answers, it's easier to just not think about it too hard before it all comes apart because... Otherwise, you might just have to listen to Jesus, who the whole time is actually saying the same thing. The text actually starts off with exactly what's going to happen. The Son of Man will be delivered over into the Gentiles and will be mocked and shamefully treated and spit upon. And after flogging him, they'll kill him. And on the third day, he'll rise. And the whole time, even though we have heard it before, we understood none of these things, just like the disciples. They are joined, though, in such a primal way that they cannot be separate. The healing of the blind man and God's crucifixion and resurrection, because God's passion cannot be understood apart from prayer. And prayer can also not be understood apart from Christ's passion. The, the prayer of the blind man asking for sight is not an indication that Jesus doesn't know what to do. It, it's not that he won't help until he's asked. The answer was never contingent on asking, but on God's mercy. And Jesus, the son of David, is merciful. God's ego isn't so grand that he won't help unless he's asked. In fact, when nobody understands it, he took flesh. And when nobody wants him to go to the cross, he goes to the cross to be humiliated, to be spit upon, to be mocked, to be made absolutely nothing for you, for me, and for everybody struggling with the bondage of sin in this world, trying to figure out how to make God fix it. The secret of the Messiah, though, is, is well, that he fixes it through suffering, not through just wiping away the suffering, but bearing it himself. Every reason that God would ever show wrath, every reason that we are afraid to pray, every reason that we think gives him an excuse to not answer our prayers, those are the things that Jesus took flesh for to bear your sin, my sin, all the world's sin upon the cross, and bring it to nothing. You can tell that God is not too busy to hear you because he has already died for you. It has already worked. It is already finished. From the cross, God speaks a powerful answer to every single prayer that we have. It is finished. These things are already answered. Now prayer is not simply trying to convince God to answer us, to figure out what's wrong or to just stop being lazy, but it, it turns into comfort, which is what prayer is actually given for. The answers to your prayer have, have already been given because Jesus has died and Jesus has risen. Your faith has saved you. This is not knowledge of facts. This is not just simply not being worried about the things that are wrong that actually bring God a lot of, well, worry too. It's the recognition that the cross is the answer to them, that the cross is the thing that saves us from them. Faith clings to Jesus, not a lack of problems. And Jesus, well, Jesus bears the cross for you, for me, 
for all. So when we go to him in prayer, we can rejoice because we are already his children in our baptism. We already have a heavenly father. We already have an advocate with the son so that when we pray, we speak to a father who loves us enough to help us in the name of a son who has already worked for us, that we would be reminded of all of the things that God has done, is doing even now, and will continue to do so that we don't need to just continue to bottle up guilt and, and shame so tight and, and force it down or, or just come up with an excuse to, to avoid the whole thing. Instead, we pray. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on us, but he gives us his word so that we can actually see what mercy looks like. It looks like a cross, and he gives us a baptism so we can actually know who it's for. It's for you. It's for you even when your prayers feel unanswered. It is still finished. You are still baptized so that even if you have an answer you don't like, even if you have pains of this world, you are already joined to the next. The answer there, the answer there is hope. So go to church and like, hear it or something. Mm -hmm. Bye.